Hey what's going on guys, Code Mac again here in this video we're gonna be encoding chess moves into integers and decoding them back using the C programming language feature called macros. So this technique is used in order to increase the performance of the move generator in general. So instead of using just the bare functions, we would be using macros in order to speed up uh, the process of calculating uh, of generating moves using the uh, uh, C programming languages uh, precompiler. I'm not sure how is that called. Uh, preprocessor. Sorry, uh, sorry. Using the C programming languages preprocessor. Okay, so uh, let's move to the end of the of our variable definitions here. So probably right after after the board would it be just fine. And here I would like to. Uh, define the move formatting here. So, uh, uh, move formatting. This video uh, would encode coding definitely, but uh, it's way more important to understand like what's going on under the hood because otherwise uh, it won't be really that easy to explain to, to understand like how do we encode moves and decode them back. So, first I would like to list uh, features that we're supposed to be encoding with, uh, within our move and uh, we'll we'll, you, <laughs> we, we will be uh, making use of uh, uh, bit shifts, uh, of, of shifting the bits and bitwise operations in order to achieve our goal but let's go just step by step so I will try to explain this uh, as easy as I can. So the very first thing to consider, uh, the, the very first thing to encode within the move would be the source square. So uh, literally the square where the piece is currently standing at, is located at. Then we need to encode the target square. Uh, then we need to encode the promoted piece. So say we promote it to either queen, rook, bishop or knight. So this piece if we have this pawn promotion, we need to encode the promoted piece as well. So promoted piece, and then we need to encode up to four flags. So the very first flag is a capture flag. So every time we uh, encounter a capture move, we need to specify uh, the bit that, that is responsible to flag the capture to one. And then we will have our double pawn move flag and double pawn uh, flag okay then we'll need to uh, specify the in peasant flag and finally the castling flag so if the move is castling the castling the castling flag is turned on if it's in peasant this and then in peasant flag is turned on if this double pawn push respect to the stuff uh, the same stuff if this is the capture okay so promoted piece would be uh, encoded optionally only if it is available target source and target square would always be available and now uh, I need to specify um, the uh, some uh, I would like to provide you a binary representation of the integer and regarding the size of the integer well uh, According to Wikipedia, the minimal size of the integer type in the C programming language is 16 bits. But uh, we, if we, well, I, I, I've started chess programming when I had a 32 bits computer, and there the integers were 32 bits long, if I'm not mistaken. I'm, I'm not sure what the length of the integers on the 64 bit computers. It, it, it might be 64, but I'm not really sure. So I'm not going to be t talking about this. Uh, what I can say that if we specify this int uh, data type for the variable to store our moves, there would be literally enough bits inside this in order to store uh, all the data we need. And because uh, you, you know, like if we see this encoded move as a number, as a decimal number, it won't really tell uh, much to us. So I would like to provide. A binary representation not of the entire integer but only of those bits that would have been involved in order to uh, encode our move so we'll need so uh, I will I would be using four bit nibbles uh, to, to make it more clear so one uh, and I will use up to six nibbles here 
Okay, and now I just uh, want to grab them all and let's make it some spaces there. So and save. Okay, so. Now we need to calculate how many bits we actually need in order to encode our source and target square. So uh, to, to answer this question, we need to find the index of the most uh, significant square. So uh, 112, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Okay, again, 12, 2, 3, four five six seven eight nine yeah 119 now let me just open my calculator and in this video it's already on steroids <laughs> so just gonna uh, be able to uh, convert decimal numbers to integers so we just have this 119 where is my nine okay let's say plus zero just to give a result value and let's convert this result to not to hexadecimal but to binary so we see like one two three four five six seven bits are occupied in order to uh, uh, render kind of render this move in, in binary in order to represent this number in binary so this means that the very first bits of our uh, integer that is responsible for storing the move we, uh, we will need to to use up to seven bits so let's calculate them uh, I, I will i'll be now uh, visually showing you this so if we have this four bits and also up to three bits here so the ones represents the bits occupied uh, to represent the source square so we have this seven bits right and then the next seven bits uh, would be needed to encode the target square. So I can say like one. So now we have five, okay, uh, six, and seven. So make sure one, two, six, seven. Okay. So the next thing to consider, we need to encode our promoted piece. And let's go to our piece encoding to see uh, how the promoted pieces are actually represented so probably I don't even yet have uh, this promoted pieces being represented oh no why, why, why I don't I do have them so it may be either start, start, starting from so knight bishop rook and queen so starting from 0 1 2 so starting from 2 and ending up with this queen so let's calculate its index so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so yes yeah, should be so the black king should be 11 now let's oh my god why did i open the browser i don't need this really sorry guys so let's go for um, our 11 which represents the black uh, the black queen plus zero equals and try and convert this to binary and we have uh, four bits uh, occupied in order to represent this number of 11 so this is the exact number of bits we need to uh, preserve for our uh, promoted piece encoding so let's take the following four bits to preserve them to match this promoted piece to encode this promoted piece and starting from here we would, we would be using the only single bit in order in order to store this flag so there would be one bit uh, to represent the capture flag so the next one would be representing this in peasant flag the next one the oh sorry double pawn flag in peasant flag and finally this castling flag so well I really hope I didn't miss anything so yeah, it seems like quite pretty nice. So from now on, we can already start uh, implementing our macros in order to either, uh, in order to both to encode and to decode our moves. 
So in order to define a macro in C programming language, we need to use this define directive and then the name of the macro, so set move in our case. And it works just like the function, so it takes uh, uh, a bunch of arguments here. So uh, I will use uh, one letter variables to uh, one letter names for uh, these arguments. So source score, I'll call this, uh, I don't know, S or F, like from square, so source, target, or okay, let me, let me even. Yeah, let, let me just better go for full names. So ju just to make it easier to understand. Yeah, so f forget one one, le one letter mm, representation. So source, source square, and target square, target square. But then we go for, well, probably it would be just a, a little bit too long. Okay, promoted piece. Promoted piece. Okay, and capture flag. Mm, double point flag. Well, uh, yeah, it's the line is getting <laughs> too long. So mm, I just don't really want to make this line too long. Well, let's let's make some uh, something in the middle. So source target uh, promoted or piece. What we leave there? Uh, there. So piece. Yeah, let's call this just piece. And here, just capture uh, double the uh, double. Well, let's just call this well double or pawn flag. Well, maybe let's just call this pawn flag, which would mm, which refers to the double pawn push. And in peasant, I'm just wondering. So I hope there won't be any conflicts with my in peasant variable. Uh, there shouldn't have. Yeah, probably because the preprocessor goes before the variable are initialized if I'm not mistaken. Well, let, let's try this. So in peasant and castling. Uh, now I just want to bring this uh, macro to the next level. That's the use, that's the reason to use in this slash uh, not to the right side but to the left side. Oh, my god, I just know how to call this guy. Just opposite slash, opposite direction slash, doesn't matter. And the outer parentheses represent the entire macro, and here uh, we would be doing the main stuff. So, in order to uh, turn the bits on, we need to use the bitwise OR operation. So, make sure you understand how the bitwise operation works. You can reference the Wikipedia for, for that purpose. For now, uh, I need to do the following stuff. So, uh, it's it's hard to convert this to decimal uh, numbers directly. So uh, I can convert them to hexadecimal and to use those hexadecimals within uh, within my uh, macros. So this would be hexadecimal. So the f the first number would be it's seven. Oh my god, sorry. This is seven. So I'm just manually can I'm now ma manually converting this. To, mm, to hexadecimals. Well, I, I can do this, and this would be f because uh, this is like what's number. So eight plus four. So it's it, it's gonna be six. Uh, it's gonna be fifteen. Uh, or yeah, this is fifteen. So uh, anyway, uh, just in order to avoid confusing you guys, uh, I would use the, the calculator here. So. Uh, okay, so let me just reset this stuff. How can I? Oh my god, how can I reset this? Where is the C button? Okay. Oh, it's what? I, <laughs> what the hell is going on? Oh my god, how to reset the calculator? Okay, let me just 
let me just drop this entirely. Okay, I want to go to the programming mode and the binary format. So 111 and 1111, and I want to convert this to the hexadecimal. So let's say plus zero to get just some result value. And if I convert to hexadecimal, it will give me 77F seven, seven uh, hexadecimal. So just, I, I, I didn't fool you guys, right? So this 7F is the exact number uh, to bitwise or our move with. So um, uh, so here we specify our source square. Uh, so yeah, the very the very first thing yeah I, I just uh, uh, I just need to provide some tests obviously. I'm just thinking how it would be better to do this. I, I I've never been explaining this before to anybody, so uh, just 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 to make it this would be like uh, uh, we need to shift. Well, just just hold on a sec, guys. Okay, so let's take now the target square and. Uh, shift the left, uh, shift the bits to the left, uh, uh, the number of seven, I guess. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, yeah, seven. So before we proceed, uh, I think it would be better just to try to demonstrate how, in particular, this is going to be working. Uh, I guess even, though, even if I will demonstrate this as Uh, in Python interactive shell, just to to print this like strings, it won't really help that much uh, because yeah, they might not be. Oh my god, guys! I just I don't know <laughs> how to explain this. So okay, let me just let me just implement this, and then and then I will just demonstrate demonstrate how we apply this. I'm I'm sorry, I'm really bad at, at explaining how the things works, how the things works. Uh, I do understand this myself. Uh, I can make it, but uh, unfortunately, I'm sorry. I just I just can't explain this. Uh, so the next thing to consider, we need to take this promoted piece, so our piece, and we need to shift this up to. So this is four and four eight, and four is twelve, thirteen and fourteen. Okay, and then bitwise or with. Um, yeah, I will, I will now try to explain this again. So basically, this this uh, schema explains this stuff, but. Okay, okay, so uh, let's first implement it and then go for first step. So then we go for capture. So we need to shift the capture to so it's kind of 4 multiplied by 1, 2, 3, 4, 16, 17, 18, right? And then uh, Uh, so this this would be 18 so this would be 19 and then we have in peasant right would be shifted to 20 and castling would be shifted to 21 yeah, it's a bit too long. Castling shift to twenty one. Uh, yeah, I just well probably let me just remove this indentation so oh well, it doesn't really help much. Mm. Well okay in this case probably if I can Okay. Yeah, I think I can do like this. Uh, 
Oh, I can even. I can even do like. Like this. Yeah, this is much better. Uh, oh, shift tap is not working. Which is a bit weird. Something wrong with my keyboard shortcut, sorry guys. Well, okay, so here, here. Okay. So maybe a couple more indentations here. So okay, so this should be synthetically uh, correct. And the next uh, several um, macros uh, would be responsible to extract the source target capture piece and this uh, flags back from the encoded move uh, yeah it's just uh, <laughs> uh, I need to test this okay so now let's try to go for explanation so take number two or maybe take number three I don't know so um, Let's consider this line. So if we have the integer uh, equals to that is equal to zero initially, and then we have another integer equals to this like one, 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 one. So let me just uh, have uh, the representation for this uh, in, in decimal mode. So, so if we have this binary one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and we have uh, an in decimal. What? Hold on a sec. Oh my god, what's going wrong with this computer? computer? Uh, okay, take number four. Uh, one 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 two three four plus zero equals okay and convert to decimal what hold on a sec this is weird so it's treating them to be maybe it's not or okay guys just hold on a sec okay let's try to go from the other side so take number five so let's have this 119 uh, index and convert this to binary okay so we got this this sort of a number here mm. so we need to, so this bit is worth eight so if we add 119 plus 8 plus 8 in binary it should give us you kidding me man malform expression it's not mal oh my god oh my calculator is so weird so 119 plus 8 what <laughs> you kidding me? Oh man! Oh, that's because it's the binary. Yeah, we need to go back to the decimal. Uh, okay. 
127 and this in binary this should be like eight ones I really hope that is so yeah so 127 so imagine that uh, we have an integer equals to 0 and the integer equals to 147 and if we perform the bitwise or operation with that integer and with this sort of a, a number that in theory would represent our from square in binary representation our integer would look like this and it would be equal to 127 or in case if we just bitwise or this with 119 it would be look like this okay but I just just want to have all the uh, ones in order to make sure that all the bits are occupied and what what shall we do if if we want to uh, uh, encode the target square so it's it, it's gonna go in literally the same with the only little difference uh, if we didn't have this bits uh, oh my god if we didn't have this bits occupied yet we could have just basically do this uh, bitwise and bitwise over operation between the move variable and the uh, target square variable uh, but this are already occupied so we need to take uh, uh, so we need to make we need to make this uh, bit shift here I'm not sure if the calculator is actually capable of doing this uh, is this a bit shift uh, yeah it seems like so it would take this uh, 127 and it's in point uh, uh, okay let's let's try again yes yeah, it's, it's time to, to learn how to how to make use of calculator <laughs> it's it's really time okay so let's have this 127 plus zero equals okay let's do this in binary in decimal equals okay now let's move to binary okay and I just want to shift uh, seven places to the left and you see like this is what we got basically so after our uh, shift uh, bitwise shift bits operation so th this is what we got okay and if we just convert this uh, back to decimal it would be incredibly big number so it just you see like it's really a big number here right so but in binary it's literally the same number that we had before but it just been shifted uh, to the left and now we did uh, free the very first seven bits in order to get them bitwise or with the next variable to encode and in our case this is the target square oh my god <laughs> <laughs> it seems like I did manage to explain this stuff so after this sort of an operation okay uh, we can already uh, so, so so what is happening uh, uh, this operation gives us the number like uh, what we have but shifted to the left uh, the number of times uh, of how many bits uh, is needed to encode the, uh, the, the source or the target square so, so when we have this number, which is in decimal, looks like this, we just bitwise or this number with a previously, uh, with a previously uh, kind of mm, mm, source, uh, with a pr pr previously <laughs> stored source number. Oh my god, so source square. So in our case, this would be like uh, this number, and we just, uh, where is our? How, how to bitwise or in this damn calculator oh my god uh, and or oh here here it is or and one two three one two three four and now uh, all the uh, all the bits would be once you see yeah so th that's kind of it so we are bitwise or in with the next variable so like the next like this would be the target square and not the target square itself but uh, previously been shifted seven uh, seven bits to the to, to the left uh, from in camera perspective it should be like this okay uh, uh, camera is just mirroring the image okay so and literally the same is happening for all the other pieces so when we get this number 
again so the move is now equals to this number which is in decimal like doesn't really mean much to us but in binary it really starts making sense so we need to shift this to in our so this time uh, no we, we, we're not dealing with this so this guy just stands uh, as it is like 14 14 ones here and when we have the next variable which represents the piece we need first to shift this 14 uh, exactly uh, 14 so the number of these guys 14 uh, bits to the left and then we would have appended them further and further well I guess uh, I really hope you did understand this if, if not I don't know maybe you can leave the commentaries below this video or something but uh, I don't know <laughs> how else I can explain this so you just try to play around with this I hope you will uh, understand like, how exactly this kind of works okay and now we need to do the opposite stuff so we need to learn how to extract data back from uh, from our from our this like uh, move from our move so here uh, I just can provide the commentary like set move and here we'll have uh, several will have several macros so the very first one would be extract uh, extract uh, source square so let's call this define get get move source and it takes move as an argument and it returns look okay, at I forgot the proper syntax for this uh, well, probably I should enclose the return value within the parentheses to make sure it's not getting malformed so the source is encoded within the first seven bits so in order to extract the source uh, we need to say move and now we need to bitwise end with the hexadecimal 7f I guess well uh, I will now obviously we'll need to check to check this uh, it seems like to be the truth but yeah so let's actually try to go to our uh, main driver uh, I don't need to generate moves for now I just want to try to open the terminal in the current working directory and by simply typing make and to compile the source code and if uh, it works I want to run my chess hexadecimal 88 executable that would be uh, would be uh, written by this compile command okay and so now let's create the integer equal uh, integer move and this would be equal to zero uh, so we can simply say like init task move variable okay and so I don't know should I print that probably print f mm. Oh no, not like this. Mm. Let's do it like this. So set move and move equals. And now we say this set move. Set move. And we provide we need to provide the from to square. So let's take the e2 as the from square, e4 as the two square. We don't have promoted piece and we don't have any flex. So we just need to match so, so the arguments, the number of arguments should be seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So I just want to try if it compiles. Yeah, it seems like. And If I just print the move before, so print f, 
well, it's, it's quite pretty trivial that to see that the move before the sad move would be equal to zero, so let's better print this after we've set up, we, we did set up our, uh, our stuff here, so uh, printf and move, it would be some sort of a number, uh, they won't tell us much in decimal, well I'm not sure, can I, can I somehow print this in binary, let me google this, oh hold on guys, I just realized I can use Python uh, in order to easily and quickly print the binary values, so, uh, okay, let me just execute this first, why oh, I didn't print anything, hold on a sec, You kidding me? Okay, so we got this number of, but this decimal number. I just copy this, and in binary representation, it would be binary beast. So this is the binary representation. So obviously it's not fourteen uh, because it's not fourteen bytes occupied because the e2 uh, takes less so if we just um, if we just so is this a string i'm wondering if we just get rid of the first two uh okay and then use this right justify and 14 elements Oh, I forgot how to use this right justify. Just hold on, guys. Okay, so just forgot the syntax. We also need to specify the character to fill up, uh, to fill with uh, this like. How can this be? One, two, three. Oh, it is actually. Okay, so yeah, I just visually thought this is uh, shorter than the 14 elements. Okay, so we got here we got uh, the, uh, the from square being encoded and here we got the to square being encoded. So uh, first let's try to check this manually and oh my god I want to open my calculator again and let's make use of this binary file so I just copy this and paste and I want to represent this as decimal and this is a hundred and if we just print uh, so let's, let's go to our square encoding hundred so 96 97 98 99 hundred so this is e2 correctly perfectly well and I guess oh my god why browser again and I guess that this number one yeah should uh, so let's let's check this as well. Uh, calculator. Mm. Oh, this was decimal. Oh my god. Binary. And back to decimal sixty eight. So let's go to our. Let's go to our encoding 64, 5, 6, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is the E4 square, which is nice. So it seems like the encoding moves uh, more or less just fine. Uh, but obviously, it's not the way to test it. So I just want to use my macro get move source and take the move as an argument and it should output a hundred now yes so um, just um, well let's say yeah I want the new line at the very end so get move source and I want this to be converted to 
in the normal coordinate so I can say like square to words and to the array okay save and just to say like this is the move okay oh my god what a oh I just need to turn this to string okay we got this e2 which is exactly the square that we uh, consider to be the target square and well probably just get rid of this part for now and copy paste and I'll just try to print our get move target I hope I already did implement this, don't even remember. What? Oh, so I didn't <laughs> I didn't yet implement that, sorry. Okay, mm, so let's try to implement that. Okay, so the next thing would be to extract a target square. target square define get target square get move target and it takes move as an argument and okay now we need to uh, so this bitwise end stuff is the same because we need to extract the data from up to seven bits uh, but mm, I guess there might be two ways we can either shift them back or maybe to use so just hold on a sec I'm just wondering can I uh, if I just encode this to hexadecimal so starting from the end so this would be zero then this the, uh, is 8 so this is F okay and this is uh, 1 plus 2 this is 3 so this is the hexadecimal value for yeah so I guess if I just bitwise and this number copy if I just bitwise and this number with the move it should give me the right square as well. Let, let me try to check this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> something has gone definitely wrong, so segmentation fault occurred. Uh, mm. <laughs> uh, okay, get move target. Uh, I'm just really interested. It's really interesting, like. Can't, where, where, is, where is the bug? So you, you can't do it for some reason. Okay, guys, just hold on a second. I need to just try to find out if, if this way is possible, actually. So, well, okay, guys, so uh, probably I won't be wasting your time for nothing, and I'll better go for uh, the approach uh, I've been following many times in the past. So, uh, uh, yeah, it just needs some time to, to research like how, how exactly that could have been done. So maybe maybe this makes some sense, maybe not, but still. So uh, uh, if we just take our move and simply shift this to seven, uh, seven bits to the right, so we just take this and just uh, we take this target square just shift it to the right side so it would be uh, it would be living right over in here and as far as this is done basically so we're gonna just get rid of the source square part of our move and we just get the bits for the target square and then we can simply bitwise end these bits with the hex uh, yeah with the hexadecimal seven seven f so just with all all the, all, all the seven ones basically so this is kind of it and this would definitely give us uh, a target square as well so 
we got this move e2 e4 exactly what we got here like e2 and e4 and here we can mm, provide some sort of a piece so well let's take like uh, queen so this would be this would be white queen probably i don't yet have mm, uh, a data structure to convert these pieces to do i have them uh, well let, let's let's just let's just follow step by step so let's try to encode our queen move which is okay and now we would have been printing that along the way as well so i just want to print the new line at the very end of our move okay so um, now we need to define the macro to extract to extract promoted piece so we need to extract moves promoted piece okay and define get move well let's call this get move piece takes move as always and here so we need to uh, bitwise and our shifted move with only four bits right only four bits and this this is f right so x decimal f should be enough and now we need to shift our move to the right uh, i guess to seven and seven yeah to 14 14 bits uh yeah this should work and now let's try to print not square to coordinates no we need let's first say like get move piece and mm, move right save yeah and <laughs> you're kidding me man uh oh that's because yeah so first let, let's try to print this in decimal uh say remote it be oh let's just well probably probably we can even make a new line here and here we can say just promoted piece right so first let's let's have it in decimal promoted piece equals to five okay we had a white queen i guess right so let's make sure that it is actually five okay zero one two three four yeah it's five so it's 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 correct and i'm just wondering uh, do i have somewhere an array or something to convert oh i have this only for the print board function uh so i will need No, let's create another one basically so promoted pieces uh, let's uh, so this would be decode promoted pieces and um, I guess this may be might be an integer so int promoted pieces and <clears throat> so the index of so we, we need win and this would return us win uh, okay Then rook, then bishop. So the white pieces are the upper cases, 
uppercase letters and night and the lowercase the black piece is the lowercase letters so queen rook bishop and knight so this should work i hope so if we now index our remoted pieces by this piece code we're getting from our get move piece we should get uh, we should get the valid piece so it should print uh, here within promoted piece it should print the big q which stands for um, for white queen but hold on a sec uh, actually uh, when we would be in uh, encoding moves the color doesn't really matter because yeah just so the color doesn't really matter okay anyway well promoted piece yeah just need to print this like this character mode so yeah we got this queen but guys I really need uh, I just need to answer the question so yeah just hold on a second. I need to check one little thing here. Okay, uh, so let me just try to test this with the, uh, with all the possible opportunities op or options, and then I'll just get rid of upper cases and make all of them like lower cases. So uh, black knight save. Okay, we got black knight, black bishop. Okay, black rook. Okay, black queen. Okay, and a white knight. Okay, white bishop. Okay, rook. And queen, we saw that already. So now I can simply say here uh, I would be I would like to return the lower cases because uh, it regards the chess uh, algebraic notation style standards. Uh, okay, so sorry. Bishop, queen rook, bishop knight, queen rook, bishop knight. So now it should print the lowercase r. So the it it kind of distinguishes. Uh, it distinguishes the piece type, which is which is great. But for the notation, we don't really need that. So we'll need to extract the piece. But uh, and the piece would be what is there actually. But regarding the notation, we don't need to distinguish them. So. Just, just to bear that in mind. Okay, so now let's get done with our flags, basically. So the very last thing to consider here. Uh, so we need to extract moves and now the flags. So capture flag and um, define get move. Capture and move, and uh, it's enough to bitwise end with 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 only bits. So, well, I can say like this, but just to, to keep the structure, I'll, I'll give this in the hexadecimal notation. But literally, this is just like the regular one here. So we need to take the move and right shift this to. Uh, so, uh, my God, how many? Oh, I can I can reference this. I can reference this. Uh, this shift basically. So eighteen. Okay. And well, maybe I can just can I just grab this, guys? Okay. So m capture, get, move, pawn flag. Well, just pawn and here we have 19 mm. get move uh, double form push flag here we want to get moves in peasant flag OK, 
okay and 20 bits to the right and here we finally want we finally want to get the canceling flag game of canceling okay so 21 well, it should work uh still we need to check this out so let's go to our main driver okay mm. so so yeah flags would be just just the decimals so print f uh we want so capture flag and decimal and here we want get move capture okay and then you know what, guys this routine stuff is the just essence of chess programming believe it or not so this is exactly how it goes you know, obviously I could have skipped this, but I really want to show you the entire process of creating the chess engine because it's so addicting, you know, like... Okay, so the capture flag, uh, double pawn push flag, double pawn push flag, uh, get move pawn, then we go for peasant flag and finally for uh, castling flag get move in peasant and get move castling so all this stuff would be uh, will make use of all this macros within our make move function which would be one of the most complicated and uh, essential uh, functions uh, within the entire engine at the same time so let's have a look now we should have all the zeros for our flags yeah just want to add the new lines after each of them so the new line here 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 and don't need this anymore okay so we got uh, all the flags being set to zero and now let's try to Mm. set the flag so now capture flag should be equal to zero to one perfect uh now double pawn push flag should be equal to, to one okay now in peasant okay now this like okay if it just drop some random it's the same yeah okay perfect so it seems like our moving coding and uh, decoding works perfectly well at the moment which means that we can already uh, create uh, our add move function this would be the topic of the next video so instead of just printing the moves uh, to the console within our move generator we, instead we'll, we'll create a move list that uh, would be populated using the add move function that would uh, uh used well, which would call this set uh how call this uh set move right or encode move yeah set move set move macro right where is this mm, yeah set move set move macro or uh, we call we can call this not the set move but probably better to go to say like encode move and here I can say just encode and uh, well extract I could have said decode instead of extract but it's more like really like extraction or well maybe let's let's do this decode okay just for clarity Save and just just to make it work here we use this encode and encode and I, I'm not going to be changing this get to decode because it would be it would be too too long name for a macro yeah so 
this is it guys so uh, we just uh, we just we just did it so the next uh, the next video would be creating the move list and appending the moves from the move generator to that move list so I'm sorry for this video it takes too long but I really uh, I really wanted to explain all these tiny little details because you know like, uh, when I was uh, first um, making use of this technique in my life I didn't really understand how it works much I was just copy pasting the code without a much understanding but later on uh, when kind of a couple of years passed uh, I just wanted to uh, understand on my own how exactly this is done basically and I was really so excited when I just managed to realize how it works basically so uh, I wish you to realize how it works as well and again like uh, the performance uh, the, the the overall uh, mode generator performance uh, increases uh, I, don't, I can't say significantly but it increases and that's you you, you kind of feel the difference between uh, the encoded moves versus using the C structure to uh, to store every single uh, parameter within there even though that's that could be a little bit easier but you know like uh, I really like this approach that's the reason I wanted to share this with you guys so this is it for this video thanks for watching I hope you've learned something interesting out of this tutorial so until the next time and take care